Prop 19 changes certain property tax assessment rules on property transfers by homeowners 55 or older, or those who have lost a home in a natural disaster. Prop 19 would enable those affected to transfer their tax assessment to a more expensive home three times instead of once, with an upward adjustment. It would also eliminate one exemption that exists when someone transfers a home to a child or a grandchild if the recipient doesn't use the home as their primary residence. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. It's a beautiful day. I just wanted to tell everybody how excited we are from your LGR committee to start these new broadcasts out to you to let you know what's going on on all the areas of legislation in our association coverage area and the coverage area. So with that, I am extremely excited to introduce to you my very dear friend and your CAR 2018 president, Mr. Steve White. Welcome, Steve. Thank you for being our first of many. Fantastic. It's great to be in the San Gabriel Valley this morning and to see all my friends. Um, I hope you notice that the Zoom background that I'm using for the Yes on 19 campaign is very specific to the San Gabriel Valley. I have sent that to your local association of realtors and they'll be able to distribute that and several others to you should you like. We have uh, Zoom backgrounds from San Francisco, San Diego, California Desert, Palm Springs, Lake Tahoe, Mount Shasta, Big Bear, um, and many other places. So um, your association has those for, for distribution. So um, my name is Steve White and I was president of the California Association of Realtors in 2018 when we ran Proposition 5. And the terms of Proposition 5 were the dream proposition that California Association of Realtors wanted to present. Unfortunately, it had significant opposition and it barely lost, but it did not pass. <laughs> since proposition, since that time, um, we have worked with the legislature in a couple different ways that I'll talk to you about. And Proposition 19 is what's presently going to be on the ballot in three weeks, I think, three weeks from today. So I'd like to go through some information on Proposition 19 and what it does and what it changes. Um, and then I'd be happy to take questions from you, if you like. Um, while we get the... PowerPoint presentation started. Um, I would like to let you know that <clears throat> one of the myths of Proposition uh, 19 is that it makes changes to Proposition 13, which was passed by the California voters in 1978. This is absolutely not true. Um, proposition 19 leaves Proposition 13 absolutely and virtually intact. So we'll go over what Proposition 19 does and what changes that that makes. So the first slide, if we could please, or slide number two, I guess. Next, next slide. There we go. <clears throat> So the provisions of Proposition 19, it, it allows a permanent tax break to spur home sales up to 75,000 new transactions in the first year. And it allows California seniors, disabled people, and homeowners that have lost their home to uh, natural disasters like wildfires, which are, have been ravaging our state this summer. It allows those folks to sell their current primary residence purchase another primary residence of any value anywhere in the state of California and take their prop take their proposition 1978 or proposition 13 um, tax bases with them and they can do that up to three times uh, in their lifetime it also makes some changes to the intergenerational transfer reforms 
the first the first topic there, the statewide property tax portability, subsequent to Proposition 13, the voters passed Proposition 60 and 90, which would allow California homeowners to take their tax basis with them when they sold a home. Unfortunately, Proposition 60 and 90 simply are not working for Californians today, and I can talk a little bit about that. The second um, topic is intergenerational tax uh, transfer reforms. Mm -hmm. Also subsequent to Proposition 13 was the voters passed Proposition 58 and 193, which would allow children and grandchildren to inherit, their, inherit properties um, and um, take the tax base that their parent or grandparent had. Next slide, please. Is this as blurry to everybody else as it is to me? I'm okay. Okay. Um, California Association of Realtors collected 1.5 million signatures to qualify a ballot measure this year. And once we did, the legislature paid attention and came to us and said, you know, California Association of Realtors, perhaps we have a legislative alternative to your proposition. And with some minor changes, they passed a bill on a bipartisan basis. That bill was ACA 11. And that is what Proposition 19 is with California Association of Realtors support. So this shows some minor changes that were made to uh, our original intended uh, proposition and, um, and why it qualified for the ballot. Next slide, please. So one of the benefits of Proposition 19 is that it supports fire and emergency response. It provides a whole bunch of revenue, tens of millions of dollars for fire protection um, to protect homes and lives from wildfires. It does allow tax relief for families that pass down their family farms from generation to generation. And it generates hundreds of million dollars for school districts. So the cities and counties and teachers unions and firefighters and uh, many of the other, well, all but one other uh, opposition group to our previous proposition are in support because of this long-term revenue source generated by Proposition 19. It is estimated to generate a revenue of $1 billion annually. Next slide, please. So you can see it does have broad support across the state. Um, it, it passed ACA 11, which became Proposition 19 passed on a bipartisan basis in Sacramento. And folks, that simply doesn't happen in Sacramento today. You don't see bipartisan support for anything, really. This is, uh, on my screen, the slide is very blurry. Can, it, it, can other people see it clearly? Steve, it's very clear on mine. OK, good. So we have, again, agricultural groups, teachers, firefighters, cities and counties, public employees, unions and whatnot are all supporting uh, Proposition 19, senior groups. I wanna show you two commercials that you may have already seen on television or on online um, and I will preface this by telling you that the 
original commercials that were generated um, by the ballot task force that I've been working on for two years uh, featured actors speaking our message. And we decided to use actual real people and in at least one case, a, a realtor, California Association of Realtors member. Um, and we found that the support um, for these commercials as a result uh, skyrocketed when we used real people. So let's take a look at these two commercials. Prop 19 helps California's most vulnerable. It provides property tax fairness for disabled homeowners like Cindy, stuck living with a broken elevator. 19 helps wildfire victims like Ellie, one of 24,000 who lost their homes to fire. And seniors like Pam, who need to move closer to family or medical care without a tax penalty. Prop 19 limits taxes on our most vulnerable. Yes, on 19. This is a real member of the California Association of Realtors who lost her home in the Paradise Fire. We saw the cloud of smoke and my heart fell. I knew we'd lose our home, and we did. Over 24,000 homes have been destroyed by wildfires in the past few years. Wildfire victims need help. So I'm voting yes on 19. It limits property taxes on wildfire victims so families can move to a replacement home without a tax penalty. You never know what you'll be faced with. Please vote yes on 19. The third commercial that we're not going to see today is a real home seller named Pam in Northridge, California that was that is currently trapped tax-wise in the home that she raised her kids in. She really wants to move closer to where her children are and to where uh, healthcare, better healthcare is. But if she sold her home that currently I think is assessed at like 250,000 and purchased a home in San Diego where her kids are, her taxes on the new home would be measurably higher, which would be negated by the passage of Prop 19. So pretty soon, a family home in Northridge, California will be freed up for your clients that really cannot find homes to purchase today. Next slide, please. So the polling on Proposition 19 is one of the biggest questions that I have. Um, uneducated, just reading it on the, you know, reading it on the ballot, we find that initially there's a 49% of the voters said they would vote for it and 34% say they would vote against it. So it would still pass. With the positive messaging, some of which you've seen just a moment ago in commercials, that support skyrockets up to 66%. And even with negative advertising, um, with some of the myths and dis uh, untruths that are being said about Proposition 19, still 52% of likely voters say they will vote for Proposition 19. Next slide, please. So we do have a microsite. You can use that barcode there by, on your phone and they'll take you to the microsite, but it's carhomecoalition.com. And there's all kinds of information on there and some flyers that you as realtors could actually send to your clients. It's a great time to contact your clients for something other than are you ready to buy or sell? Mm -hmm. Uh, there's all kinds of other information there uh, on that microsite. Next slide, please. I already talked about the Zoom backgrounds. Here's just two of them. So these are great Zoom backgrounds for us that are busy on meetings. Next slide, please. 
So social media, you can keep up with this on Facebook. Yes, uh, vote yes on 19 on Facebook. So you can get the latest information and polling and information on um, marketing materials, yard signs, those type of things that are available to you. Next slide, please. Do you have any questions about Proposition 19 that I might be able to ask now? I'm looking in the chat. I don't see any, but. I know I've had several members calling me at home. We're working at home right now. Asking me if there are going to be yard signs available. If your association has signed up for the Yes on 19 campaign, those uh, are available to you. Uh, Mark, I had sent an email to you and the president of your association about 10 days ago with a link to signing up to that. And the answer is once your association is registered as an association in support of um, Yes on 19, then yard signs are available to your members. Great Thank question. They, I've just had I probably get two, three calls a week on it. So it, thank you. That tells me what I need to know. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. I do have a few questions in the chat. Okay. Okay. So let me see. Um, someone wants to know about the limits of inheriting property and the proposition. <clears throat> up to a million dollars for a primary residence. So in other words, the tax, the tax basis that a child or grandchild inherits from their parent or, or grandparent is good, whatever that tax basis is, is good for the first million dollars of value of the, of the property. Should it be assessed more then it is a blended basis beyond that. So they'll, they'll receive the, the lower assessment up to a million dollars. Okay, and someone wants to know in the chat about myths and miscommunication from the prop. Is there any myths that you can um, discuss or any miscommunications that are out there that uh, we may know, need to know about? Oh, I, who asked that question? That's a great question. That was probably Sharon Bowler. <laughs> no, it actually was not. <laughs> but I'm going to keep names out of it to keep the yeah. anonymity. But it was not Sharon. <laughs> we, like, we like Anon, no problem. No problem. Uh, so the biggest myth is that it makes changes to Prop 13, and it does not change one thing about Proposition 13. Let me tell you why changes to Props 58 and 193 have been made. Those are the intergenerational transfers. 58 was such, you know, children can inherit their parents' home and Prop 193 is grandchildren can inherit their grandparents' home. And let me tell you why those, those have been changed. Um, in 2018, in January of 2018, the Legislative Analysts Office published a white paper and, and gave it to the legislature and showed the legislature facts and figures that showed that if the legislature was to repeal outright Propositions 58 and 193 and take away the right that Californians have today to inherit property and retain the same tax basis. If they were to repeal, it would generate billions and billions of dollars. And I can tell you that Carol Facciapani and I have been working with politicians in the state legislature for many, many, many years, along with so many others of you. I mentioned Sharon, uh, Mark Peterson, other people in your association, and we know personally, hand, you know, firsthand, that nothing makes a legislator salivate more than to hear that they can generate billions of dollars for them to spend. So beginning in the spring of 2018, there was a very serious movement in the state legislature that accelerated greatly 
in after the November 2018 election, where one party had now a double supermajority, a supermajority in both the Assembly and the State Senate. And they were moving to repeal Propositions 58 and 193 and take away the intergenerational transfer provisions. So California Association of Realtors sprung into action, prevented that, mm -hmm. and we created this compromise um, which allows children and grandchildren to be able to inherit their grandparents and their, and their parents' tax bases, provided that they live in the property. That was a choice that we had to make. So that is a, that is a change. And that particular part of it, we also added family farms, which were not in our previous, uh, right. in our previous proposition. Mm -hmm. So that gained agricultural support. Okay, Carol's raising her hand. <laughs> yes, Carol. President Steve, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, there is so much legislation out there and this is a very good example of why we need to speak with people and why our president at CBAR this year wanted to start this program, Ms. Helen Moreno, on the propositions because there's so much hidden behind things that we don't realize. And all of us bit, bit our tongues with some of the compromises that you have to make it for the betterment of the bill in its entirety. So thank you for bringing that up, Steve, because a lot of people don't understand that give and take because they want to get the whole thing as we do. We fought. We fought to get everything we could. And this was the best solution that we felt for, our, for the people of California. Well, Carol, I'm glad you brought that up because there are, you know, in the political reality that we live in, in California right now and for the foreseeable future <laughs> is that you do have to compromise. And the California Association of Realtors gave it a shot. We were purists. Okay. We gave it a shot and we did not want any changes to Props 58 and 193. And that was what our Proposition 5 did. And it did not pass. With this minor tweaking of that, if somebody's going to inherit a property and run it as a rental, it will be reassessed to the current market value. That one change garnered many of the previous opponents' support of Proposition 19. Thank you for explaining further. I can't believe the time already. We have covered so much. Nancy, is there anybody else in the chat? Oh yeah, there's lots of, <laughs> lots of, lots of questions, everybody. Um, I'm sorry we can't get to everybody's question, uh, but I do want to remind everybody that if you do have questions, um, you can always email me at the association. It's noakley at cber.net. And I can go ahead and direct you to somebody who can assist you. Um, Bill Rue is also a great uh, wealth of knowledge and information at our association. Um, and his email is bruh at cbar.net. And if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to either one of us and we can definitely get you some uh, clarification or answer those questions for you. Um, I do want to... Um, let everybody know that we have a quick announcement, quick plug for our LGR briefings, hot issues briefings. Uh, we have Prop 15 is our next one, and that's on October 21st at 1 p.m. Tino Rossi is going to be speaking on Prop 15, and then on Prop 21 is going to be on October 27th, and that's at 1 o'clock as well. And we have Matt Buck with the California Apartment Association, and they're going to be speaking on Prop 21, and that's on the 27th. So if you have any questions about either of those, you can reach out to me, and I can assist you. Um, I think that's all. Uh, there are a lot of questions in the chat, and I do apologize, everyone. We just can't get to all of them. But if again, if you have questions, just reach out to Bill and I, and we can get you some answers. And um, Carol, uh, anything else? 
Yes, again, I really appreciate, Steve, you being on this for us today. We're very excited right. for this to be our maiden voyage of this new uh, chat uh, for LGR. And I couldn't think of anybody better to start it off with. I want to thank you for all your years of work at the California Association of Realtors, your presidency, NAR, and we'll be calling you again real soon. So I really appreciate that, Carol. And in closing, I just want to let everybody know I'm really glad that you're doing this with your local association, looking at the different propositions. And uh, I know you're going to enjoy the information on Props 15 and 21. And I will tell you that the California Association of Realtors has taken a no position on Prop 15 and a no position on Proposition 21. And many of your members and leadership were part of that decision-making process. Absolutely. So yes on 19, no on 15, no on 21. And now I will retire to Palm Springs. <laughs> and your beautiful puppy. Yes, thank, thank you. you again. Thank you again, uh, Nancy, the association, uh, every, all the staff, all that are here with us today. We look forward to seeing you real soon at our new project at One With for the local LGR committee. See you soon. All right, everyone. And just to let everybody know, if you did come in late, a recording of today's session will be available on cbar.live, uh, most likely by the end of the week. So you can see that at the end of the week. Uh, with that, we are signing off. Thank you so much. We'll see you at the next uh, Hot Issues briefing on October 21st. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone.